Hey folks, welcome to another episode of The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. On this episode, I'm talking to Chris Watson from the Postmodern Polymaths podcast. Chris has been a guest on the show a couple of times already, and we talk about uh, CRT and some of the moral panics that are coming from uh, various conservative movements in the United States. Uh, they have like the the don't gay don't say gay bill and, and stuff like that. I don't know. I can't I can't remember if we talk about this exactly in in this episode. We we cover quite a, a stretch of uh, topics. We recorded this back in I think early February. Uh, Chris has been really uh, gracious in waiting for me to get this out, and I've been really kind of putting it off because I've been uh, bumping it for. Uh, fresh content from various people that I really wanted to get the content out, like Professor Flowers and uh, Tori Williams Douglas and and uh, and uh, uh, Sarah Burrell stuff, people like that, and Caitlin Bailey. Like so, Chris has been bumped a few times, <laughs> and uh, I apologize. Uh, it's not his fault that he got bumped, but I just got excited about other content and and decided to put it out instead. <clears throat> so this is finally. Coming out, uh, this discussion with Chris Watson, this is, I think, the third time that he's been on the show. Uh, we have talked tw- once, we talked about QAnon, uh, once we talked about uh, the use of redneck as an insult, and in this one, I think we talk mostly about CRT and uh, kind of conservative moral panics. Before I send you over to the interview, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple things that have been on my mind. Uh, my partner and I recently watched the documentary... Uh, we need to talk about Cosby uh, by W. Kamau Bell on uh, on Showtime, and I think it's really it really did a good job. I thought of uh, discussing the impact of Cosby as a person, as a black man who was pioneering in media for uh, black folks, as well as uh, he he donated tons of money to uh, HBCUs and. He had a huge impact on the community in a variety of ways that was very positive, but then also behind the scenes was this monster who was drugging and raping women. And uh, the documentary really does a really good job of uh, kind of dealing with that in the context of the society we live in, a, a deeply racist society, uh, and and him being a black man, and also these crimes that he committed. <laughs> and I don't really have a ton to say about it, except that it's really, I think it it's really impactful. He had a huge impact on on many women, and to the effect where many people just don't, eat, like they literally can't see past his, uh, his crimes, his rape, the raping he did of these women. And, uh, and I don't blame them one bit. It's not, uh, it's not for me to judge if you can't separate his con, the work he did from the ac- actions he took. I actually can't either. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not something that I'm capable of, of recognizing is that, is like, he actually did these awful things. And, and while, uh, there's a lot of context within society, uh, about that, but the, once you reach a certain number, uh, of accusations, even without any other evidence, it becomes pretty apparent. Uh, like, like there were people in the video, in the documentary who were saying like at 15 people, they were like, okay, well, this is, this is no good. Uh, obviously 15 is too many for us not to believe them. And at this point, I think it's 60 or 65 <laughs> women have come forward over the, over the years. Um, and, and many, many women who, uh, were very public women, like they were actors, models, uh, people of various, uh, in other jobs that their, their position in their, their job was impacted by, uh, this action that, uh, that Bill Cosby took. And it impacted them the rest of their lives <clears throat> by him committing these heinous crimes. And, uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty serious stuff. Uh, if you can handle it, it's four episodes. I recommend watching it. Uh, I really, I, enjoyed it in the way that one enjoys something very serious that is very important and that deals with a uh, uh, tough subject matter. <clears throat> Which brings me to 
uh, the other thing that's kind of been on my mind, which is this Amber Heard, Johnny Depp uh, kind of thing, trial, I guess, that's been going on. A lot of people have picked their sides. They've picked their 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 whatever. And I, I guess I have too. I, I read a few articles. I didn't follow the trial closely when it was going on. I tried very hard to avoid any TikTok videos or any quick take uh, Facebook videos that I saw. And oh my God, did, did Facebook ever try to force those down my throat? I really tried to avoid them as much as I could. And uh, I think I did a fairly good job of that. Um, I didn't, I, I saw them. I saw the headlines. I didn't, uh, I didn't watch them. And I got quite annoyed by how often I was seeing them. Uh, and it was always the same. It's always the, the, uh, Amber Heard, uh, is, is, was the bad guy in these, in these videos and on these TikToks and whatnot. And, I just, I find it less than convincing, I guess, because society does this. We, we, as a society, uh, vilify women as, as quickly as we can in order to defend men who have done something awful. Uh, and we did, uh, it, it's related, I guess, in a way to the Bill Cosby thing, because a lot of the women who first came forward, they were vilified. They were, they were questioned as to why they're trying to take down this powerful, uh, dom, uh, uh, powerful, uh, black man in a society who has worked hard and, and pioneered uh, all this stuff, but he was doing these awful things. And Johnny Depp is an abuser. There's The evidence is there. Uh, it's really weird. The verdict ended up being really strange to me because uh, they said in the uh, trial that if Amber Heard proved that Depp had abused her, then they couldn't rule against her. But <laughs> she did prove that, and yet the jury still ruled against her. And uh, I'm, there's a lot of discussion about why that is. Um, the evidence was pretty clear in my books. I'm not really up for debating it, but <laughs> I think there's parallels, right, in the way that we treat women. And the, even without, even though there's a racial element in the Cosby situation versus the Depp situation, I think there's a, a parallel with the way that we treat women who come forward uh, as victims of abuse or uh, sexual assault or uh, rape or other crimes. Uh, it's usually blaming the victim. It's usually blaming the person, the woman who, or non-binary person, who has suffered at the hands of uh, usually a man with power over them. And this is it's just the the status of our society. It's it's patriarchy. It's rape culture. It's misogyny, and it seems pretty clear to me. I'll I'll provide some links uh, in the show in the show notes or description box for this, so that you can read up on it too. Like I don't want to say I know one hundred percent sure that everything that Amber Heard wasn't also all a bad person or what have you. Like uh, even the articles that I've read, they often say like that she wasn't a quote unquote perfect victim. Like she hit back onto occasion and, and she took revenge in various ways. But I know people who uh, have been abused by their partners and who then reacted after the fact and they hit a wall where it was like enough is enough and I'm not taking this anymore. And they've done other things that could be called abuse or theft or count like revenge. I know people who did this and this, it's a reaction. It, it, it's how you react when you're abused. And I don't know, it just seemed, the evidence seemed pretty clear to me. Uh, there's, there's great, great articles and great uh, content out there about it. it. It just seemed like a practice in societal misogyny overall to me. So I'm not particularly impressed with the way our society has handled this situation. I know nobody wants to talk about this anymore. Uh, but in my head, the two things are linked uh, with the way that we treat women. And I think that we really have to re-examine, like we really have to keep examining the way that we treat women in society. And if we are turning them into a villain, if we're making fun of their abuse stories, if they're making fun of their sexual assault stories, then uh, I'm sorry, you're the shithead. If you're making fun of somebody who claims to be a victim, then you're the shithead. And we really need to... Uh, <laughs> We've got to stop getting our fucking information from TikTok and fucking Facebook and this shit. Like, it's just absurd. The quick takes that people take. Uh, you watch some grifting streamer who's watching the trial and it's free content for them. They can watch the trial. 
It's public domain. They can watch it on, on, on their stream. It's easy content and they can have hot takes and say, Oh yeah, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Look at how she's sitting. Look at how she's doing this, that, the other thing. Like it's absurd. You're not, <laughs> uh, other, other videos and stuff have said this, but, uh, what a lot of the things that grifters on their streaming, uh, chats have said is, uh, how, uh, Amber Heard was sitting funny or, or she was acting. She was clearly acting based on her body language. And like, you're not a body language expert and even body language as a, as a, a way of reading people is a pseudoscience. It's nonsense. And then you're an amateur at this bullshit. Like, so don't pretend that you know how people act. Uh, anyway, I, I've gone on longer than I intended to on this. So that's all I've got to say. I've got I've still got a lot of interviews in the queue that need to be processed and edited and my production schedule is still ridiculous and I'm working overtime shifts and, uh, but I'm getting this stuff out as fast as I can. And that means that, uh, I won't always be able to record at home. So, uh, this is a rare exception. I get to do the recording in front of my camera and, uh, I'm going to have a little bit of time, hopefully, to edit this. But right away, I want to say thanks to all my patrons. Thank you to everyone for watching and listening. And thanks for sharing this around. Uh, it, if you share it, this hel that helps to get more views, more listens. Uh, give it a retweet and, and what have you. Uh, this show is available on all the podcast places as well as YouTube. And I stream on Twitch whenever that's possible. And I want to thank everybody who supports this show. You can see their names at the end of the video. If you want, are listening to this on a podcast, that's where you get to listen to about two music minutes of uh, really cool music. <clears throat> if you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist and sign up for $1 per month or $1.50 if you're in Canada. And that gets you access to a special patron chat room on the Discord server, as well as extra long videos and occasional early access. And of course, my deep and heartfelt thanks. If you want to contribute but don't want to commit to a monthly payment, then you can send me a one-time donation at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. And if you can't afford to send any money, then just share the show around. Uh, give it a thumbs up on YouTube or a five-star rating and a review on the podcast app of your choice, as well as Podchaser. Anyway, I think that's everything. Thanks so much for being here, and I hope you enjoy the interview. Hi, and welcome to From, uh, from Many People's Strength. That's the wrong show. Hi, and welcome to uh, <laughs> The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. The podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by Chris from the Postmodern Polymaths podcast. Very good. You got on the first try. <laughs> yeah, I screwed up my show. <laughs> I got yours right. As it should be. No. Uh, thanks for having me, Corey. Um, yeah, for sure. I wanted to come on just to, I don't know, I've never been on the show. so I. You've been to... on this show twice. <laughs> This particular show or the this other particular, one? No, this particular show. You've been on this show twice. Yeah, <laughs> First time we talked about QAnon, and then yeah. the second time you came on and we talked about... I can't even remember what we talked about. I don't about. either. Oh, yeah. we talked about rednecks and why redneck wasn't an insult. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Okay. So. Sorry, man. My memory's shot. Yeah, no worries. I don't mind having a guest that comes on every once in a while regular, so... <laughs> Well, neither do I. Apparently, Zach's been on. God, he's pr well. He's pretty much a co-host now. When yeah, I, I was it. just gonna say, isn't he a co-host now? Yeah, pretty. I mean, yeah, he barely <laughs> does his show anymore. Yeah, the feed only, never updates in my app, so. <laughs> and I only do it every once in a while uh, when I find somebody I really, uh, really interests me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of your recent ones was with. Uh, uh, intellectual dark wave yes yes yeah which was, i really enjoyed that episode i i uh i enjoy anything that makes fun of the intellectual dark web <laughs> well what was strange was like his commercial his little he had a song clip commercial i guess just before i was watching majority report which is like my main news source i guess and this crazy song popped up just before i was like what the fuck is this <laughs> And it was, I look, I mean, it was just this dude, this dude, and he's not, he doesn't have a whole lot of followers and he deserves more, I think, but yeah, he does great satirical songs. Uh, Shapiro, he makes fun of Shapiro. And then he talks about 
that one song is about how Hawaii was, you know, pretty much overthrown by the U.S. Was it cheeseburgers and well, spam burgers in paradise? That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Smart stuff. Anyway, it's good stuff. I would advise anybody to check it out if you're interested. So. Since you forgot, maybe, uh, and I have quite a few new uh, subscribers and listeners now, um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your podcast? So my name is Chris Watson. Uh, my show is a postmodern polymath podcast. Uh, initially, it was just me, and I uh, just have different uh, subjects. Uh, generally, it's kind of leftist uh, social justice stuff, I guess. It, it just depends. Um, I've had, I've talked about, you know, like, uh, sex trafficking, uh, sex work, polyamory, uh, lots of stuff, lots of different social, just whatever tickles, tickles my fancy. We were just and, talking before, uh, the, we hit the live button. Uh, you have been doing your show for quite a long time. It used to be the Podong Polymath podcast. Right, right, so yeah. you've covered a, a huge swath over <laughs> like a number of years. So. Yeah, I didn't even. It, it's weird because I go back and look at the number of episodes. I'm like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem like that many. I mean, not like anybody listens necessarily, but I mean, and, you, know, you do it because you enjoy it. Whatever. It's yeah, fine. yeah, that's right. And my partner, it's something my partner keeps telling me. If you want your show to get uh, more traction, you have to constantly be updating and putting it in front of people and like posting nonstop. So if you aren't online doing that, then I never expected for it to do anything anyway, really. I just do it because I want to and because I'm yeah, attention whore. So. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> yeah, so, so go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, so, yeah, um, I live in uh, Tennessee, which is uh, a great state here in the American South, mm-hmm. uh, full of tolerance and love for diversity. No, I'm sure, just sure. Kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. It's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have heard that uh, uh, Tennessee, in particular, is well known for acceptance and diversity, and uh, probably. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's going on? Like, yeah, uh, you've got a Republican. So, uh, on the grander scale, first there. of all. <laughs> well, yeah. See, the problem is like Tennessee used to be. Up until not that long ago, I mean, as far as a southern state wasn't as bad as the other states. Right. Ever since this Bill Lee fucker got in, he's basically a tool for the fucking far right Republicans in this state who have a super majority, of course. Of course. And so it's just fucking just down, straight downhill. Um, they've is that already like, st- is that like the, uh, is it kind of like a Trumpist type? Republican, or is it more like a traditional racist, you know, uh, he's so <laughs> Nixonite type? Tennessee has a habit of electing businessmen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Technocrats, which is fine when they actually, like, Haslam wasn't the worst governor as far as a Republican. He was more, he owned Pilot. He owned this huge company where he was part of the company, the family, or whatever. And he's he was basically... He was fairly moderate by Southern standards, I guess. But okay. Bill Lee is all, was also a businessman. However, he has no spine. So he is just basically controlled by the GOP. And, oh. and most especially the far right, which is how you're starting to see all this. And, of course, it's a bigger trend in the South of the CRT stuff, the critical race theory. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that seems to be catching some traction uh, more and more, uh, there's a specific case, uh, I, a lot of people, I mean, it's been all over the news. Um, this book called mouse, it's like, um, it's like an anime, a dull animation. I don't want to say it like that. That makes it sound like, but it's a comic book, right? It, it's comic. Yeah. And it's, uh, or uh graphic the story, novel, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, the story of how this guy's dad met his mother and uh, during the Holocaust, just before the Holocaust, and all mm-hmm. kind of shit that happened. And uh, in McMinnville, McMinn County here in, uh, in the glorious day of Tennessee, uh, they decided to uh, ban the book. Well, of course, you know, that doesn't I mean you start banning books. Um, 
Well, there's curse words in it, and there was something about like it was uh, suicide was the big thing. Oh yeah, and and there's a, there's a nude mouse in it, right? Also, yeah, very very <laughs> offensive, very offensive. Yeah, um, so and it's for grade school school children, obviously. That's that's why it's a big deal. Turns out not not so much. Oh not, no, not so no. Much. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't even really. I guess you would say. Middle school up, yeah, maybe, yeah, probably. If you're talking like about the reading level, yeah, I would say that's about the time people should start learning stuff like that. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and uh, of course, this is just a bigger trend. Uh, the South just never, never learns, man. It's just ridiculous. We're always just fifty years behind, at least everything. So we love banning books in the South. We love banning albums. We love banning anything. I mean, I love Jethro Tull, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, as an example. Uh, in the 70s, Aqualung came out. Uh, it, it, the, basically, sure. it's uh, God. It's God sucks. Well, it's religion. Organized religion sucks. It's okay. It's kind of a, the loose. Oh, they burned those albums. They was all over that shit. Every, they just throw fits every time anything challenges anything, you know. Of Greeks of anything, you know, that doesn't fit their fucking is, theocratic narrative. Is it Tennessee or is it not? Maybe it's uh, Florida where they've got the rule now where like uh, teachers aren't allowed to uh, have anything that will make white people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> that's the, that, so that's the CRT craze that's sweeping the South. Yeah. yeah. And of course, nobody knows what the fuck it is. <laughs> Nobody down here even knows what critical race theory is. And if you go listen to the dude who started all this shit, I think his name is Christopher Rufo, which fuck his name. He's, he took my name and made it shitty. <laughs> He's the one that started all this shit. And if you go listen to him and you go look at the quote, there's a specific quote. And I, I'm paraphrasing here, but he's basically, we want to get it locked into people's minds that CRT, any th- time they hear CRT, they think about all these race things when it comes mm-hmm. to it. We'll just solidify that in people's minds, and it'll be kind of a just an overall uh, overreaching code. It's just like the all-purpose dog whistle. Well, shit, right. it's a bullhorn at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, nobody knows what it is. Nobody understands it. Even most people. Shit, even most liberals don't know what the fuck it is, right? So what is uh, critical race theory? Okay, so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on this shit. Okay, <laughs> okay. I did a little research. <laughs> Fair. I, I do know Derek Bell was the, is the guy that's credited, or one of the people that's credited with coming up with the idea in the 70s, but he didn't come up with it. As everything else, it's built upon, you know, the shoulders of giants. We, You know, that saying. Uh it basically it's a way of looking at history through the lens of institutional racism, I guess. Okay. Looking at uh, lo- looking at uh, government, looking at the uh, socioeconomics uh, through the lens of kind of uh, the critical. That's the critical part. Critic coming from a critical point of view and seeing how thing how racism affects or uh, everything in society, right? Uh, yeah. Whatever, everything. Uh, like I said, socioeconomically, uh, government, uh, uh, the way people interact. You know, I mean, it's just, it's it, everything is informed. It's a way to look at history through that lens. Is right, all I'm saying. Right. Right? Okay. I uh, I remember back. I think it was 2016, 2017, Right when uh, it was shortly after Trump had been elected and uh, I was doing my series on social justice interviews. And I, uh, I had come across somebody who was talking about critical race theory at that time. So it was, it was something that I, I knew about in the back of my head <clears throat> as something that anti-social justice people were, they, they didn't, they thought it was bunk or they thought it was a bad theory or whatever, but it was never like the boogeyman that it has turned into. Well, that's what they do. That's what these far right people do. Well, GOP practically is basically just a far right party at this yeah, point. Yeah, that's right. They've created the Frankenstein's monster, you know, for decades, and they're wondering, like, establishment types. Oh my God, what happened? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you engendered these people. You fucking created this 
crisis. Yeah. By feeding into this fucking narrative, you know. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's just another one. It's just like it, it's just like all these social, uh, you know, uh, this whole uh, the battle for the battle for America's soul or some shit like, you know, like right. the culture wars or the cold. Yeah. That's yeah, the culture. Wars. <laughs> it's the culture yeah. wars is what they're, you know, it's all it's about. And it's, it's basically a red herring because they don't have any actual policies. Right. To, yeah. To help anybody. It's all about just giving the people what they want, which they've told them what they want, which, which is, is yeah. hate. Somebody to be scared of, yeah. It's yeah. the say it's fucking fascist, really. It's I mean, I know that word's overused. <laughs> I don't fucking care, man. This is straight up some fascist shit. It's still I th- it's still important to call it out where <laughs> where it is, right? Like the uh, the uh, Republicans, and I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the Democrats. I know, oh. uh, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm like an apologist for Joe Biden, but. The GOP is certainly like a fascist party. That's what they do now. No, it's yeah, totally. It's you can call it whatever you want. You can call it crypto fascist. You can call it fascist. <laughs> I don't whatever. fucking care what you call it. I just know that they use fear mongering, which fascist. That's what Hitler and Mussolini did. Otherized people, right? Yeah. Ultra nationalism. Um, that's another aspect of it. You know the hardcore anti-communism, like they, red uh, scare, bait, yeah, red baiting, red baiting. Shit. Yeah, yeah, they do a lot of that. I mean, I think I think Trump actually thought that would help him win the last election there because he he constantly was on the America is not going to be a socialist country train. <laughs> there is not a universe. <laughs> I mean, even. The, Come on. Even Bernie Sanders, if you look at Europe, he'd still be a centrist. Yeah, that's right. Basically. And I mean, it, not to be too much of a purist about it, but if a person actually reads like Marx or socialist theory in any way, like there's no political parties that are really very far on the left. Most of Europe even is like centrist at best. Like what we consider, I mean, there's a reason that, uh, in France, say, like, their liberal party, their quote-unquote liberal party, Macron, is constantly being uh, protested against. Yeah, because not, not... it's not from the right, it's from the left. <laughs> yeah. I love France, by the way. I love how they just <laughs> shut the whole goddamn fucking country down when they get pissed off. I love that shit. To me, <laughs> that's pure shit. That's pure democracy right there. <laughs> they, they love a riot over there, that's for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all in on that shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The only problem is in the U.S. If you do that, you get shot. Well, if you're black. Well, no, you're right. That, Especially sh- <laughs> even if you're white, and the guy who shoots you is a white kid. Yep. Who is smuggled? Who basically took a gun across state lines, and now he's a fucking hero on the right. If that tells you anything, you know. Kyle, well, it, it's. Written because dick, rotten property. dick, whatever his name is. <laughs> because property is more valuable than people to them. Like, that's what it well, boils that's down what, to. Yeah, that's capitalism. Capital is important. And capital is like the main thing, right? Yeah, that's right. People don't fucking matter. No. They're cogs in the goddamn wheel. I mean, you know all that. I'm preaching. <laughs> but it, it bears repeating. <laughs> so that seems to be... Uh, yeah, CRT is... Uh, it's one of these things that has only popped up within, I mean, in the last couple of years that we're seeing it come on really strong. And I, and I already, you can go look him up. Uh, he's, it's only been a couple. He hadn't been that long since CRT has, has been like in the news. And now it's fucking there. It's basically a, a, a placeholder for anything that has to do with telling uh, history as it really happened and making white people uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, That's, it's it's really easy to get something like that popularized when like Tucker Carlson is promoting that like basically white replacement shit. <laughs> he's you talking about fat? He's a fascist mouth. He's a Goebbels, basically. He's fucking Goebbels, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I mean, he's, a guy with that much reach. Yeah, he he's like a Goebbels with a fucking goofy that goofy look he always does. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, don't underestimate fuckers. Like, and people want to play him. I'm not. You don't. I mean, there are people who. Are, well, he's just some dude. And yeah, Fox News. It's it's like average viewer base is like in its sixty. It's like old people, right? Well, I mean, but there's still like a huge voting block, right? <laughs> like, they're well, determining even- the future for 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 people that are going to be dealing with it long after they're gone. And even so, even if it's the 60 type, you know, the older, you know, racist types who are watching it, they're funding it, but people other than them are watching it and it's giving it a platform. I mean, Jesus, you know, it's like Tucker is consistently one of the most watched TV programs anywhere. That's fucking insanity to me. You got... He don't have a bow tie anymore. I was gonna say Goebbels with a bow tie. He don't have a bow tie anymore, I guess. But yeah, it's crazy. It's him, and of course, there's other ones. But he's well, like the Sean main. Hannity is pretty popular still, and well, now you got YouTube types like Ben Shapiro and Dave Rubin and and all those fuckers who yeah. are doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's all well, one I, big. I mean, I listen to the Knowledge Fight podcast all the time, and uh, like Alex Jones is constantly like he still has a huge audience. And he's constantly, like, just saying the most ridiculous shit. Like, Alex Jones, man. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I How can you take him? I mean, how can you take any of them seriously, right? But Alex Jones is very clearly an actor. <laughs> okay. He's very clearly. Are you talking about a crisis actor? That motherfucker's a crisis actor. Yeah, that's right. And he's a motherfucker that got his ass handed to him that lawsuit by the the Parkland shooter survivors. Was it Parkland? Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. That's it. Sorry. Yeah, the parents of the Sandy Hook shooting. Yeah. So, (laughs) yeah. In his divorce, his own divorce hearings, his lawyer said that nobody would, nobody could, it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Nobody takes it seriously. In fact, the same thing happened to Tucker because somebody did the yep. same shit to him. Like, oh, no serious person, no average person believes this is real. Yeah. What country you think this is, motherfucker? Come on. Yeah, that's right. It's just, it's all <laughs> bullshit. I mean, and they think it's a, a a big game. All the establishment types, I'm sure, think it's some big because they're not the ones who have to reap the whirlwind when the shit comes down. Oh no! You know? All it does is it it reinforce like it it reinforces the power structure as it currently exists, and it keeps wealth in the hands of the wealthy that and power in the in the people that already have it. Oh yeah, that's always the game. That's always been the game, right? Yeah. Anytime the powerful sense any sort of um, union, any any sniff of any any working class unity, yeah, they they jump in real quick to try to fucking break that shit up because they know exactly what'll happen if people start realizing who is behind the fucking curtain. You know, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> well, I'm. I can't help it, man. I, I'm all into this shit, and I, I try to stay away from it. But I've been watching more YouTube, and I'm watching more. <laughs> but I'm well, watching your first mistake. <laughs> well, no, I'm watching, but I'm watching like YouTube channels that make fun of this shit because I oh. need it for my I need it for my sanity. I can't just constantly yeah. watch straight news all the time because I'll just fucking be depressed. Right? Yeah. No shit. I almost don't, I used to, like, when Trump was still in office, I was listening to, like, a number of daily news podcasts. I was constantly updating my my uh, information, I guess. And I just don't do that anymore. Like, I don't, it's not that things aren't changing anymore, but I don't need that constant inundation from the news, from the it's, mainstream news. It's exhausting. And, yeah. of course, if you're... Like us, you're like, well, you feel kind of guilty because there are people like trans folk and yeah, uh, POS people of color and uh, indigenous and these people are going through some major, and we we have the luxury of sitting back. Well, it's, you know, I don't want to pay just not watch for a about it, you know. But <laughs> self care is important. I think I don't want to. I don't want to pretend that I don't know what's going on and that I'm not doing what oh, I can no. against it. Right, like. I'm still I'm still well aware of what's going on because how could you not be as long as you still are existing within the world? So, well, 
there's plenty of people who do that. That's the problem. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, that's right. They don't pay attention to that, except if they watch their little, you know, their little 30 minutes of Tucker or, hell, even liberals watching CNN or MSNBC and shit like that. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. That's still not. No. That's, that's right. still not. It's not good analysis. Like, that's the thing. I'm listening to, uh, I was listening to a podcast that's, uh, was promoted as the best political podcast in Canada. Already, already. I'm, I'm suspicious. <laughs> I'm very suspicious. I'm a very skeptical person. <laughs> Once you say that, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. You are the skeptical leftist. That's right. And, uh, and they're talking about like, uh, Canada's spending and, and debt and whatnot as though, the way that the money was spent and given to regular citizens is what's causing inflation or part of what's causing inflation. And that's just a, a it's just a shitty analysis. Like it's not how things work actually. <laughs> like, Yeah. They're doing the same thing here. They're completely ignoring the fact that corporations don't have to charge that much if they don't want to. <laughs> exactly. They are making <laughs> record profits. They could easily, I mean, it's, Fucking welfare. They don't want welfare for the poor, but they sure as fuck want it for themselves. Yeah, that's right. And so I was listening to, uh, an, like, it's called uh, A World to Win, the podcast. And they're talking about uh, inflation from a leftist perspective. And they're saying, like, this economist that's on there, he's saying, like, it's not that the the money being distributed is what causes inflation. It's that the money is then being spent. And the profits of these corporations and the wealthy is staying high and they're hoard. So then they're hoarding all that money. You're so all that money you're printing is going into the same set of hands and it's getting out of circulation. Then that's causing inflation. Right. And, but <laughs> so, uh, According to some people, <laughs> what? what <are> you t- <laughs> and even I forgot where I saw it. This is like USA Today, <laughs> some opinion piece. No, no, no. What? It's not corporate. <laughs> You're a dumbass. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You didn't go to a big fucking Ivy League school and shit, you know. Something like the ratio of uh, economists who are like in the public sphere, uh, who are public publicly academics or whatever, are the majority of them are already millionaires because (laughs) before they even went into economics. The I didn't know that. The economists who are uh, not millionaires end up doing other types of work so that they can get ahead. That's what, yeah, that's <laughs> what you're supposed to do, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I would assume that you go, I mean, you don't go to academia for the money. No, that's You're right. not supposed to. Let me just, let me qualify well, that. People who want to get ahead can't go into academia because it, it doesn't pay as well as it, one would suspect it does. So if you're an economist Going in knowing that, and you do it anyway, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you're a fucking class traitor, and the guillotine is going to be coming <laughs> yeah, for you. That's right. That's all I'm saying. You know, there are plenty of econo- e- economists who do not agree with that liberal bullshit. And yeah. if you go re- ride, uh, read Thomas Piketty, Capital in the 21st Century, which is basically a sequel to Das Kapital, Marx's book. I tried to, okay, there's an actually documentary. <laughs> I re- I started to read it, and I'm like, man, it's just so dense. I it feel is. this, but it's just so much, man. I got, my, my old ass alcohol damaged brain can't do this. I need a doc. There is a documentary, which is actually good. Obviously, it's not as dense. It's a little more pop for popular consumption. I would right. encourage anybody to check that out. There's also like some really good analysis uh, podcasts that have gone, like, that are like the Marx uh, Capital Reader stuff like that. Like there's there's good stuff out there that can help you uh, learn what's in Capital without actually having to read the the tome itself. Well, there's and I, I will say this: if uh, Philosophy Tube is an excellent source. Like I hate philosophy; it gives me a headache. So, but watching Philosophy Tube is great, and she's also a great person. Right. Just, which is makes it even better. Um, she transitioned while the show was going on, basically. She transitioned from a man to a woman during the course of the show. And, of course, 
I don't want to hear Virtuous England. You can kiss my ass. I don't want to hear any of that shit. This is a legit, because she started the channel because she couldn't afford to go to philosophy clap. People can't afford to do it. So she wanted to start a channel to educate people. Mm -hmm. So I encourage anybody, and there's a Marx, uh, Marxist stuff on there. It's critical theory. And there's postmodernism, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Go check that out if you're interested. Yeah, it's a good channel. And, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, YouTubers who ended up kind of, they turned out shitty or whatever you, in various ways. But there's a, that doesn't make their old work no not worth watching anymore, right? Like, so uh, for Peter Coffin, I know he's controversial and I, he says a I, lot of really, sh I think, really shitty things. I haven't paid attention to him in long time but a lot I of know what he's doing. a lot well or a lot of their work because uh i, I think they are a gender and not okay. uh a cis so they uh a lot of their older stuff is still really good stuff so just don't pay attention to what they're doing now <laughs> well Bosch is a big fat prick now let me tell you but if you watch some of his older stuff, it's he's still nominally leftist. Oh, no, he's not leftist. He's a liberal, I guess. It's hard to tell. I know he calls himself an anar anarcho-communist. <laughs> but I don't think he actually understands what that means. <laughs> what the fuck he's talking about? Anybody that gets somebody on his show and starts talking about, well, you, you're talking about white genocide, aren't you? And you, uh, no, you can shut the fuck up forever. Yeah, it's just pure nonsense. You, you don't have any, and now he's just, and I've been called Grandpa Vosh before, and fuck them. <laughs> lovingly, lovingly. Uh, they make fun of, uh, it's lovingly, but they call me Grandpa Vosh. I have watched Vosh twice. <laughs> once when he debated a narco pack, and once when he was uh, debating uh, against Ben Burgess. So oh, Ben Burgess was on there, right? Okay. Yeah, it was. I think in uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, but Ben talked to him about uh, class reductionism, and I actually agreed with much of what Vosh said in that discussion. But also, I agreed with a lot of what Ben said, and like class reductionism is a weird topic. So <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that. I don't want to lie. Well, like you're just, reducing everything to. Yeah, to class the, as opposed to other factors. Yeah, it depending on who's talking about it, it's uh, ignoring racism, ig ignoring okay, that's what, uh, sexism in favor of a class analysis. That's what I okay. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not convinced that's what Ben Burgess thinks or what Vosh thinks or what most people who use who are considered class reductionists actually think. Like a lot of them seem to be more on the level of like. Well, I think that we share class with people who have different groups, and that's why we uh, we assess things through class. But uh, that's something I have to look into more. Yeah, it, it's it's not a straightforward subject, and I think there's a lot of different opinions on it. But I think class is important, but also <laughs> race is a huge factor, <laughs> and well, that was gender is a huge factor. So Bernie's uh, Bernie's one of Bernie's kind of uh, blind spots. Mm -hmm was probably reductionism because he wanted to try to bring everything to class. And he did try. He, he got Nina uh, Turner on there. He, he tried to make an effort to try to get black folks, um, try to get that issue in, in his campaign. I'll give him that. So, but he's an old white, I mean, come on, <laughs> come on. He's an old white dude. I mean, he's well, trying to, be, you know, I don't want to give him a pass for that just because, <laughs> no, I'm not saying give him a pass. I'm just saying, Give him, I just say a little bit he, of leniency. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what the fuck else do we have here, man? Give me something, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, America, fair. shit, man. I mean, there's plenty. AOC is great, don't get me wrong, but she is in the house and she's well, she can only do so much, so much with like five the squad. There's like four or five people. We need more than that. We need all the old people to die, and I mean that. <laughs> Very seriously. I need all the old people in Congress. Do you know the average age of people? 
It's, uh, no, I it's don't. It's insane. But yeah, it's not young, is it? It, it well, in, in the Senate, it's like sixty something. Or it's fucking ridiculous. Some dude just died in office from Alaska, and he was like eighty something. I think there's no okay. way you should still be on, in office when you're that old. It's just it's irresponsible to me. You know, just well, give yeah. up. You're not deciding. You're deciding the future for people, and you're not going to have to deal with the situation, the repercussions of it. Right. So there's no interest in really. Drilling down in anything that's uh, t- that important that's outside of your yeah your realm or outside of your bubble or whatever. I mean, shit. I mean, go look at the uh, Jackson hearings. I don't want to mispronounce her name because I can't remember. Punchy Kintosh. I can't remember. But the people who are questioning her are old white people. <laughs> Almost exclusively. I mean, you had Cory Booker. Uh, fucking shit lib. I mean, but I mean, it's better than... <laughs> old white people i guess I don't yeah yeah sorry i just had to uh, i had to ban somebody from the twitch stream because they uh i was wondering what you're <laughs> yeah because somebody popped up and uh decided that they would start insulting us and uh thinking that we were uh, Ooh, call- you get insulters we're calling for the elderly to be killed apparently so oh jesus yes <laughs> so yes we're calling about- for the <laughs> senior genocide that's exactly what i meant you're an absurd person you don't yes, get to be I, in my in my twitch uh chat anymore i'm absolutely an absurd person i'm an absurdist <laughs> yeah so to be clear no i'm not advocating for the forced death of old people there's what? plenty of good old people it's called hyperbole yeah to make a point and one would have to be a would have to be approaching what you said with bad just been bad faith right away anyway. So, no, it's yeah principle of charity or whatever. I but mean that's that's Twitch. That's how that works. <laughs> this is actually I start I got was on another Twitch stream. I'm fairly new to the Twitch thing. I'm still and pretty good, new at it too. So reaction videos and it's weird. I don't like uh, what's his name uh, Hassan. You know. Oh he, yeah, Hassan Piker can't watch it because it's just too much. I can't. Is I can't. He's got the the chat up on his screen, right? I can't do and that. And it's so fast. I can't How do you keep track of what's going on? Oh, there is comments. <laughs> C- calling for the elderly to be killed reminds me of a certain guy from the 20th so- Yeah, a little mustache. Do I look like I have a little mustache? Yes. I see. Okay. No, totally. No, totally. I'm advocating for that. Totally. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot you could see comments in here. Okay. Yeah, no, fuck you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> so so what were we talking about before we got distracted? Oh, yeah, AOC. I was going to say, uh, she's moderated herself quite a bit since she's been in office. And while she's still far to the left of even 99% of the Democrats, it still can be frustrating from a, uh, a more left perspective to hear her moderate her tone and moderate her voice to be more centrist liberal. That's it's it's the it's the age old question, right? Do you get into politics? Do you try to act like you're in the game so you can change it from the inside, right? Right. Which never fucking works it doesn't seem like <laughs> no it seems like being in in the game makes you part yeah, of the changes. game right yeah like, right so that's the problem like at least bernie I'm, I'm gonna say again bernie hasn't really switched his position as much yeah he's been pretty consistent the whole time actually i mean you can say what you want about anything else but i don't think he's really changed his positions that much um aoc is Again, she's in the House, which is not quite as influential, I guess, as the Senate, maybe. And I don't know. It's it it really is just kind of it's it's overwhelmingly depressing almost because it's like, what the fuck? I mean, do you have to do to get any fucking thing done? And of course, you want to well, revolution. Okay, go ahead and tell me how. It's easy <laughs> to sit there and talk shit. But when it comes to action, when it comes to somebody actually coming up with a plan to enact these things. Well, <laughs> this is where anarchists come in because prefiguration means that we start building community. We start building uh, mutual aid and programs so that we are, as communities, taking care of each other 
and less reliant on the system, right? That I agree with, yeah. So okay. that's that's where anarchists and anarchist theory comes into play. And in many ways, that's how uh, we think the real revolution is going to happen is because when we are so – when we have enough of a system built on ourselves, then we have less – then the state itself will stop being important. That makes, yeah. Mutual aid, I need to, I haven't really, I've just now recently been informed about what it is and what it's about, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a pretty core component of the whole anarchist thing. And just left in is, leftism in general, like the idea that uh, we are we are here for each other instead of like, relying on the state or or some NGOs or nonprofits to to give us things. Well shit in the South especially. I mean we need all the help we can get, you know. I mean we don't I mean we don't even have fucking health care. Fuck. We didn't have that one thing. <laughs> right. At least you got weed and health care. We ain't even got that shit. This state doesn't have weed anyway. I mean I can't even get high legally. What the fuck kind of shit is this, man? That's yeah, that's pretty weird. I mean They're even talking about uh I don't know if it's decriminalizing or if it's uh, uh, actual legalization, but there's talk about like mushrooms now. Yeah, uh, Oregon decriminalized it, I think. Okay. Yeah, I know lots of people are talking about microdosing psilocybin, and I'm not entirely I've sure about that. <laughs> may or may not have heard of this. <laughs> May have heard about this. Maybe as an not. insane person, as a person with a legit mental illness, as if there's an illegit mental illness. Um, <laughs> I'm on like three different pills. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's an option. Um, and, of course, all the fucking, you know, bullshit that we've been peddled all these years about how psychedelics are just horrible, even though we're sitting here pushing uh, fucking Oxycontin. How right, like opiates are, are okay, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fuck you. I mean, so yeah, it's it's just, I don't know, it's, it's depressing. And that's why we need mutual aid in the South, which is consistently one of the worst regions in the country for more, you know, infant mortality, poverty, education, name it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So this is, if any, I'm not saying the rest of the country doesn't. And, but they seem to like to write us off. And I've, we've had this conversation before because we're nothing but a bunch of barefoot rednecks down here. But, well, you know. We get a, we I'm, get a similar right. situation here in Saskatchewan. Like, oh, that's right. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> we're the rednecks of, of like, but Alberta is, is like the Texas because they get a lot of attention. They make a lot of noise. A lot of people see them and they've got a big population too, right? But here in Saskatchewan, like we're the flyover state or province. <laughs> Pretty big fucking state. <laughs> like, uh, and I listen to so many Canadian politics podcasts and I never hear them talk about Saskatchewan. <laughs> like once out of maybe a hundred episodes, I get, I get some mention of Saskatchewan. So we're written off quite a bit ourselves. That's fair. And I, I've only heard, um, there's somebody, I don't know if you know her, Jazz Cross. She's a friend, a uh, Facebook friend. She's in, and it's not Saskatchewan. This is, uh, Alberta. Calgary. Yeah. yeah Alberta. Which, but goddamn, the shit she posts that happens in that town. <laughs> I'm like, well, where is this? That's why Alberta is, is Texas. It's Canadian Texas. <laughs> Jesus. I'm like, I don't see that kind of shit here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Calgary must be like the worst fucking, how big is that place? It can't be that it's, small. It's pretty decent size. It's got to be over a million people. Anyway, this guy can't be that big. Can it? Yeah, Calgary is over a million. They've got more people in their city than we have in my entire province. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so that sounds like a place I do definitely would not because I'd be in jail probably because this blatant as fuck there. Nashville. Don't get me started. A lot of things, <laughs> but that's not. That's one thing I don't I don't see very often, at least not in the city. You go outside the city, all bets are off. But Calgary is wild, man. The kind of blatant fucking religious bullshit yeah. I've seen coming out of there. Street preachers every fucking where. Well, oil, I mean, it's all oil country, right? So then it, it's – you've got a lot of – they've been fed a lot of bad information over the decades for from oil companies who can afford to put it on TV and, and buy politicians – so, 
Now that makes sense. I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird uh, from an American perspective, I guess. To see, I thought we, we of course, Canada is always <laughs> the, the great, you know, everybody wants to go to fucking Canada. But do you? Depends, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I the people, like the, the people that you're seeing in in uh, those posts, and, and many of the people that I'm surrounded by at work and in my daily life, uh, they're the West, the Wexit people. Like they want, uh, oh yeah, they want Alberta, Saskatchewan, uh, and BC to break off of Canada and form their own country. BC is not <laughs> even the same though. Is no, it? no, BC it's got is not Vancouver. The same. Yeah, BC is not the same. They're a much, they're a much more. Uh, uh, liberal, liberal aren't they? yeah, like they've got a an NDP or like a a left party uh, as their provincial uh, premier. So, yeah, I don't think that fits. Certainly Saskatchewan and uh, Alberta, but, <laughs> but without P- without BC, we don't have access to anywhere except <laughs> South North Dakota and Montana. <laughs> so, hey, I, I'm moving to Montana. Oh, is that one right? One of these days. One of these days. I'm telling you, man, it's coming. I'm moving to Montana. You'll be within driving distance then. I'm going to come up and come up to Vagina. I mean, Regina. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry, every time I hear that town, man, I'm like Regina. Really, uh, Regina? That's why they call it the city that rhymes with fun. They do not call it that. They really. do so. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. I'm still down. I'm still down. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I, know what the I, fuck there is, but you know, <laughs> what the fuck is in Regina anyway? I mean, come on. Ah, I mean, there's bars. There's sometimes there's music. <laughs> yeah, basically every other city. Yeah, which is not to put down your city. I'm just saying. Hey, that's fine. People put down Regina all the time, actually, and I love it here. It's. Uh, I feel like it's my city, so. Oh, yeah. Well, I understand that. Nashville is no longer my city. No, now it's Ben Shapiro's city. Now it, uh, <laughs> so. What's weird about that is that basically it's a bunch of L.A. transplants that are starting. They're trying to turn oh, it into right? L.A. South is what's happening. Oh. Because it's getting too expensive in California. So guess what they're doing? They're making it expensive here. Oh, You yeah. can't afford rent here anymore, Harley. Turned everything into like, Yeah. They're driving everything. Every local business is get, can't fucking afford rent anymore. So you get all these transplants, these fucking hipster. Ugh. It's horrible. It's bad. I mean, look, I love breweries. Don't get me. I love breweries. <laughs> I, look, I look hipster-ish. Not on purpose. I was this, I was this ugly before. <laughs> but I do not like what it's bringing. And that's higher rents. Just uncontrolled. No urban planning at all. Yeah. Just just giving fucking developers, just throw it anywhere. Throw it up regardless of if it fits. Yeah. You know, these vultures trying to drive old people out of their homes so they can sell it. They can buy it and sell it for like ridiculous markups. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. I yeah. That's all different now. Yeah, that's no good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Neoliberalism is, is great, man. Don't sure, sure. About it. Yeah. No, that's right. I love it. Yeah. So I want to kind of circle back a little bit to the sure. the CRT thing. Um, I do think it's important to point out that it's not just Tennessee, um, right? Right. It, you know, not that I have any particular. We have the Smoky Mountains and Dolly Parton, but uh, Florida uh, also has its own CRT thing that they I think they just passed. Um, and they also have the Don't Say Gay Bill, right? Uh, which they just passed. Um, Texas, goddamn! can we, can they just go away? I mean, there are lots of Hispanics there and they make sure to gerrymander the shit of that state. Of course, they have all the voter suppression because they know eventually they're going to take over and then they're going to be in trouble. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, uh, well, Texas in particular, like with this, uh, thing where they're targeting trans kids and the parents of trans kids, it's, uh really troubling it's fucking gross man they yeah. are they are fucking de- and they did this with the abortion thing they're deputizing citizens yeah yeah to fucking rat on people that is some fucking straight up fascist shit yeah. that is some gestapo shit okay that is inform your neighbor on your neighbor okay what the fuck is happening 
How do you not see this is Christian fascism? Oh yeah, Christian exactly. Fascism. That's right. It's yeah. a the, it's theocracy. It's a fascist theocracy, basically, is what it is. We uh, it's, although I just heard that uh, the mayor of Austin said something about uh, the city is a safe space or safe city for uh, for <laughs> uh, I mean, which doesn't stop child protective services from uh, investigating and harassing people, but. It does stop, like, if the police aren't going to enforce the orders from the governor, then at least that's something. Well, um, what came out that I saw recent, uh, today or the other day was the, um, this is specifically about the schools. There was a pride event in the school district, and the AG was just, oh my god, those perverts and those, just straight up said it, just straight up called LGBT folks like per like deviants and shit, not even pretending anymore. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, Austin is like everybody knows Austin that knows Texas. I mean, they're like liberal. Of course, it's neoliberal. We know hipster shit, but it's not. What it's definitely not is like super neo. I mean, you know, right wing crazy town like the rest of the state. Right. 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 So, I mean, I don't know. They're talking about, he's talking about trying to sue or, or uh, over this, under this new law that they have that you can't, you know, the whole thing with the, you can't talk about sexuality or with a no right. say gay shit. I mean, that's everywhere else. That's the same. They're going to try to sue. No, you're in fuck. Shut the fuck up. Look, <laughs> these rural town, ta- these fucking people, and this is what they need to, they seem to forget where their bread is buttered because where do you think most of the fucking, Finan- the economic shit comes. It's the big. It's the urban areas, man. Right. Right. Without them, you don't have shit. I want to see somebody in the city say, "Okay, we're withholding our fucking taxes." Yeah. Yeah. What wow. now? Yeah. We like Nashville, Memphis, and Nashville. We run this goddamn state. If it wasn't for fucking those two cities, we'd be fucking bank. We'd be living on fucking bread and water and shit yeah Uh, they seem to forget that Mm -hmm. so that really just infuriates me you know and oh and the austin's the state capital also which means all those fuckers are there sometimes right yeah same thing with nashville fucking hate it (laughs) sorry i mean this is no that's fair it just infuriates it is it's it's very frustrating i know uh like uh the It Could Happen Here Daily podcast. They've done all this week uh, between, let's see, today is March 25th. So the last five days, March 20th to the 25th, have all been episodes on the war on trans people that's going on in the United States and in other places too, like in the UK. and uh, it's, it's all out. Yeah. It's all like, I mean, even here, they did it here. I told you, Tennessee's getting even worse, man. Yeah, we passed one of those fucking trans athletes bills or whatever, and that's yeah. now the fucking new fucking thing. Now with that, that's a whole fucking thing. With what's her name, uh, winning a uh, swimming meet, right? Because yeah, <clears throat> the thing is, like we've known for a long time that all the things that they're saying are nonsense. Like <laughs> the trans, the trans athletes dominating women's sports is not a thing like, and it, it's been, I don't know. There's been people put it out, put out information on this over and over and over again. And it just never seems to go away. It's not going to, because it's not about that. It never right. has been. No, that's that. true. Yeah, that's true. It's just, it's just about another wedge issue yeah. to keep people fucking distracted from the fact that they, they have no health care. They're poor as shit. Yeah. They can't get decent education while the fucking, you know, the super rich and the corporations rob them. Throw you know. a an extremely marginalized group under the bus of bigotry in order to prevent people from, like, analyzing their situation in any kind of real critical way. Well, I don't remember what the LBJ quote is. The LBJ quote is something along the lines, convince a white person that they're better than a black person and they'll, they'll give you their pick their pocket for you. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And of course you could do that with any, any other marginalized group, trans folks, uh, LGBT for a little, they're part of that. But I mean, 
it's the same thing, right? It's this in that people religion is a big part of that here. Mm. Well, it's it's easy. It's a good tool, right? You can tell people that God sees things this way, and because somebody's got a a, a place of authority within the religion, then they can then somehow they get to speak for God, right? So, <laughs> well, what's what's fucked up about the people who are, are not actually Christians? Of course, you could. We're not going to do the whole no true Scotsman bullshit. (laughs) Right. Right. But there are liberal Christians. Okay. And there are Christians that I would, on social justice issues, that I would deal with every day and twice on Sunday than a lot of these fucking atheists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of reactionary bullshit atheists with anti-trans and anti, like, they would frame it as anti anti racist ideas. <laughs> like, yeah, you cancel out anti and anti. You still you have racism. I don't know if you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like the guy with the anti anti fascist shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I don't, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, man. That, that you, means something. <laughs> you chuckle fuck. What are you even saying right now? Yeah. I mean, but yeah, uh, they use religion yeah. uh, to propagate that kind of shit. It's an it's an easy end, right? Sure. Um, well, we're coming up at the end of the episode. Where can people find your content? Oh, uh, let's see. My new Twitter, I had another one, but it's the Triple Po okay. now on Twitter. Uh, of course, the Postmodern Polymass, it's on all your favorite podcasts, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, all that shit. Yeah. Uh I, I don't know doing the Patreon. I don't give a fuck about that anymore. Uh, <laughs> it exists, I don't though, even, right? <laughs> it, it's there. I don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit. Uh, it, basically, it's the Twitter, the Facebook. I'm on Facebook, too. Okay. Uh, the the pay, There's a Facebook page for it. Um, Postmodern Polymass, Twitter, and there's a website, the Postmodern, Postmodern Polymass.com. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining me, Chris. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends or on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. It's really appreciated, and it helps me spend more time on this and my other projects. If you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a five-star rating or a re- and a review on the podcast app of your choice or on one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser or RateMyPodcast.com would be great. If you want to find more from me, make sure to check out the show notes or check out my link tree. That's linktr.ee slash skeptical court. You can find all my social media stuff there as well as links to my other show, from Many People's Strength, which is a podcast about Saskatchewan politics, and a project I'm involved in with my friend Damien Marie at Hope that's called Atheist Humanist Leftist Revolutionaries. My Twitter is at Skeptical Lefty, and my Facebook page is The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. You can email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. And if you want to be a guest on the show or know someone I should reach out to, then feel free to let me know. You can book interviews in my available time slots on my Calendly, which is also found in my link tree. Thanks so much for listening, and let's try to make sure we're applying critical thinking and reasoned skepticism when we're attacking the system. If we get caught up in bad thinking, we can derail ourselves. <laughs>